my name's Martin Barter. I am foreman of Pope Morris, and I do all the teaching of the dances. I'm Sue Barter, and I'm the bagman of Pope Morris. I do all the bookings, the paperwork, making costumes, and the general dog's body to everybody else inside. Right, next figure! Star! Pope Morris started because I used to dance with Lincoln Morris, and I left them in 95 and a few people got together and asked if I'd teach them to dance Morris and that's what Poach Morris was created and after a few months I decided to go and dance out with them as well so I ended up being a major part of Poach Morris instead of just somebody that taught in the background and I've loved it I've enjoyed it ever since <laughs> When we first started Poacher, we didn't have a name at all and we were looking for something that reflected the area we came from. We couldn't take Lincoln because Lincoln Morris were already in existence and I don't think we'd have been overly keen if we said we could call ourselves New Lincoln Morris, I suppose, but that wouldn't have been very good. So we went for Poacher because the song Lincolnshire Poacher. Yeah. I mean, we, we could have called ourselves Yellow Bellies, I suppose, but it's something that people don't automatically think, oh, Lincoln, whereas everybody knows Poacher, Lincolnshire Poacher, mm -hmm. but we don't sing it. John does, though. My delight on a shiny night, the season of the year, I threw <laughs> got the girls who are all related to each other. Uh, there's Kelly and Emma who's just come back from having baby Lucas, their sisters, and George is their cousin. Joel is a very nice young man when he's here. Yeah. He's certainly one for the ladies. It's usually bounding across him. Hello, I'm Joel and you are. And you can see people go, <laughs> Call him back in horror. <laughs> but at least he makes people feel welcome. He does. Whether they like, like it or not. <laughs> yes. Then we've got Mark with his wolf's eyes, the contact lenses that he has. Mm. And, and the thousands and thousands of tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, actually, some of them are quite good. I've got tattoos. I don't like tattoos, but I've got tattoos. He's mm. actually got the Poacher Morris logo on his arm. I got Big John, the tallest person in the entire side. Multi talented musician. Multi talented folk singer or shouter. Yeah, um, yes, he likes shouting sea shanties at people. And there's Pete, he's a squire. Mr. Serious. Yeah, although he is lightening up a bit, he has yeah. improved to what he used to be. And he's in charge of the team overall. I mean, it's very rarely he overrules us. Well, I've got, got no bad dancers at the moment. No. I mean, you got the new members, Kat and Michael. Yeah, but that's Mark's son. Yeah. He had the tattoos and eyes. Then there's us two. Yeah. That keep the body on.
how they came up with the colours for the team. Um, this is the. Shall we tell them the truth? <laughs> right. Yes. When we yeah. first started up, we started with cockfold dancing because that's all I knew. Well, we learnt the border, and then we decided we were going to face paint up. And I wanted blue, yellow, and white because I'm a Leeds supporter. And our squire overruled me as then because he was a wool supporter, and that's why we have black and yellow. But since then, we've we've made up this tradition behind the black and yellow of where we wear the black for the traditional border and the yellow because we're yellow boys. Yeah, well, and, and the majority of the team are. Yeah. But and nobody's a wolf supporter. Well, yes, the ex squires left, so. Yeah. But got so used to black and yellow, we keep it now. Going through the usual process, always go for the same design, me. It's easier. You get quick at it. Uh, illustration for costumes well, is, it's, it's, traditional. It's, it's a traditional rag coat that they would have worn in many years. Well, they originally um, wore paper coats. Yeah. And small boys used to set them on fire. Mm. The waistcoats have probably been added later on. The hats would would have been sort of old straw hats or whatever hat they had available. And they'd have decorated it up for that day or the weekend that they were dancing out. So, um, a lot of it is based on tradition, but we put our own thing into it. So that's why some people have much better decorated hats and other people are too lazy to decorate it properly. So they just stick some feathers on it and say, that'll do. Oh, I'm quite happy now. Mine's the best hat. <laughs> <laughs> I think it just has to break a few more. Well, yeah, but I get the choice of feathers, you see. <laughs> I always get the bag of feathers first, so I nick all the long ones. <laughs> yeah, because he, he's one who has the nerve to go to the butcher and say, have you got any pheasant feathers we can have, please? And by the way, can I have a pound of bacon? <laughs> No, I mean, red coats are quite time consuming. So, yeah, looking at a couple of evenings easily, or uh, longer than that if it's got sleeves in. It just takes ages. You lose the will to live after a bit. Yeah. I mean, that one that's hanging up now, that one's sort of in the process of being made, and it's just pinning rows and rows of strips on, sewing it, and then pinning another row on. And, use all scraps and odds and ends that we've got 